So this is the infamous fourth floor. This is what you guys saw me on last night, um, hanging out. See here, here's the bathroom. As I said, lots, lots of issues in here. Lots and lots of issues in here. More shower. And I see water act, act, actively dripping right now. I can hear it as well. So, uh, yeah. so, here's the south end looking down. This is where I usually put my motion lights, is down this corridor here. Pretty cool shot there the, in the sinks. And my camera is right there. Go out here and show you the balcony real quick. During the summer, this is one of my favorite parts because it's hotter than hell up here. And here, you can come out at night and cool off, stepping out on the balcony. See one of the bell towers there. The main bell tower, actually. And if you notice, there's no bells. Just great big speakers air raid speakers and you can pretty much see them down here if you look up at this other bell tower from the other side you'll see the great big speakers but again nice view nice view entire campus there's Ulithorn Hall down there um, in all we've got a couple hundred acres here on the campus so pretty cool this is where the kids play where we get the disembodied voices. We hear the footsteps. Um, all the goings on on the fourth floor. This is it, guys. This is uh, this is what it looks like. The thing I'll tell you is these little screens that they've got on the, all the doorways here. You got to remember back when this building was built. Um, back in the 1920s, they didn't have air conditioner, or they weren't going to pay for it either one. Um, so basically the only air that the oh, airflow that they could get and again the students stayed on this floor and it had to been miserable um the only airflow that they would get is that guy would open up his window this guy would open up his window and hopefully they would get a cross breeze from room to room because each one of these rooms got their own um little breezeway and hopefully they'd get enough air flowing that they could sleep at night because I've been on this floor in the middle of summer during the days where there's temperatures over 100 degrees for over a month and I've been on this floor at midnight and it'd be with, without uh, exaggeration 110 112 degrees up here so I couldn't imagine being a student trying to sleep with those kind of temperatures Pretty crazy. All right. So last night, you know, this is where the kids usually they'll stop at this doorway, but they'll watch me as I sit in them, the chairs there, and do the spirit box or the portal and or EVP sessions, and and they'll come close, but they won't come directly to me, and they don't always come. Look at the body drawn out on the floor there. That's that's. The, back in the day before the haunted house was over at Ulithorn Hall, it was set up here on the fourth floor. And uh, that was left over from the haunted house. They, they, they used the basement and they used the fourth floor, which is, you know, a lot of this stuff that's left over, these panels and stuff are left over from the haunted house. restart the video um, here you see I got matchbox cars or uh, Hot Wheels set up and marked so if they play with them or move them um, they're welcome to but at least I'll know if they've, they've been moved from that position same thing with these little toys over here they're just trigger objects try to get them to move them there was a case where I come up here a couple of weeks ago and the bus was all the way up there at the double doors. 
but I suspect it was somebody came up here, saw it, and, and moved it up there. I don't know. Could have been. The maintenance guy will mess with me every now and then. Um, which, you know, I always get it on my camera there if they do. But there's the camera, and then you see the IR light that I added the other night to brighten this whole hallway up because the IR had burned up on the camera. The camera's good. The light had burned up, so now I've got an auxiliary light to take care of that. This is kind of the grand room. Uh, would have been their TV room or uh, su such as that back in the day. This goes up to the bell tower. They don't allow you up there anymore. The stairs were actually made out of uh, uh, steel and mesh and it's all since rusted away and become very unsafe to be on. So they don't allow you up there anymore. Sinks at this end. All right, let's go down the ramp. And now for the part that I'm sure you've all been waiting for, the creepy basement, right? So let's go ahead and head down to the creepy basement. We'll go down the ramp, all the way down the ramp, four floors down the ramp, actually five floors. The doors. There's that baby powder smell again. Bunny, I smelled that for the first time last night. Pretty interesting. Hmm. Pretty strong right here. Huh. No, not in here. Pretty strong right here though. Huh, she's with me. Someone's with me right now. Pretty sure of that. All right, that's okay with me. Very strong. Okay, let's go down. See somebody's here. They're probably not in the building, but they're, a lot of people come here to walk their dogs and stuff. There's that smell again, that baby powder smell. Continue our trek down to the first floor. Ooh, door's open. The door is ajar. Huh. I didn't think I left it open. Okay, guys, indeed, I did have uh, a visitor in here. Actually, it was Lauren. She does all the reservations and um, stuff like that. So she was catching up some, on some work. So she is up on the uh, first floor here. Not gonna affect us. Um, pretty sure she won't come down here. <laughs> So now we're into the basement, the creepy basement. We're in the, coming into the long hallway from the opposite end of the camera. So, storage closet, a lot of people, will, a lot of stories will tell you that this goes to a secret tunnel that uh, is here at the Abbey. Don't believe them, it's not true. As you can see, it's just utilizing the space underneath the ramp. That's it. End of story. Monk study hall. And then over here is the Native American Museum that I keep telling you about. It goes all the way about three quarters of this hallway on this side is the Native American Museum. So we'll go in there. You see that it's got uh, bars on the windows. It's the only part of the building that has bars on the windows because they actually did keep some pretty valuable stuff in here at one time and uh, for security. But these would have been like uh, display cases that you could look, look through before you entered the museum. You know, it might've been some Indian hair, headdress or you know, some of their dress and on a mannequin or something. 
Who knows? Uh, but that's what they were. Come back through here. Uh, so this whole section here was used for the museum. Now back here is where they keep all the uh, antique guns and stuff. And I guess they had quite a collection of priceless uh, firearms, old rifles and repeaters and stuff like that. So they used to hang on the wall here. And that's what these little pegs are that you see hanging up there. Um, these drums, I don't believe, were actual Native American drums. I think they were actually built, made by the uh, um, Boy Scouts. So here you can kind of see some of the collection of things that they had. The old rifles and things just like that. Wow, this is something new. I didn't see this here the last time. Hmm, pretty cool. Very cool. Sweet. Yeah, so these are some of the firearms that they had in here. No longer, and they keep the pistols and knives and that sort of thing in the, those little display cases there. And then at night, this used to slide open or slide across, and they would lock it up at night so that nobody could get into this room after hours. Seemed to be effective, they were never broke into. So here's remnants of the haunted house back in the day. I don't think we can get back here anymore. I think they, from the last haunted house, they shoved a bunch of stuff in here. We'll see. Well, I guess you can, kind of. But it goes back. It, it used to be a little maze. Every year it changed with different things. Um, at any rate, we'll go back this way. So, used to be they had the little door over here that you could, I could sneak into and hide out in this little room right here. And then, when people came around, they didn't know because it all looked like a wall there. Then I would grab them from right here and scare the hell out of them. But, can't do that anymore. They tore that door down. <laughs> Probably good for everybody else. Head down the corridor here. So here you can see stickers from the uh, Native American Museum. Still attached. And so you see my camera right up there. And then the auxiliary IR light, the big pink light right there. Helps light up this corridor pretty bright. So then you see me leave the camera sometimes. I come into the laundry room. Crawl space is here. I crawl through it to the other side. It's about two and a half feet tall. Um, so there's actually a crawl space under the basement, and I've been there. Got video of it. I may throw it up sometime. Crazy. It's bigger than I thought one. I thought it was tiny. Oh, oh. It goes back pretty deep. <laughs> oh, I would think down here. <laughs> but it gets pretty dusty down here. Yeah. But the last time there was fresh animal feces right there, and I thought that's what I need to get right in the face of a bobcat or something. Oh yeah. God. So I don't want to crawl back too far. Plus, you can see all the dust. Yeah. Not good for us. No, dust my city. Um, what is that? A finger. Yeah. No, it just looks like. What, what's that? Piece of is that a wallet? No, it's an old piece of board. Oh. Okay, let's get out of here. Ooh. You got it down there, Dennis. You okay? Like yeah. No. Not there. There. Uh, and he said, I saw an animal. Oh, it's recording. 
I was surprised there wasn't that many spiders and creepy stuff down there. It was actually, other than being really, really dusty, it wasn't that bad. So yeah, this used to be the laundry facility back in the day. Boiler room. So, take this down here real quick. Oh, these stairs are doozy and they're not the code and everyone's different. <laughs> so you see the old boiler room here. Now, there was an old tunnel that used to go, only one tunnel, um, that used to go from here to Ubersorn Hall, which is about 100 feet across the way here. The tunnel used to be right here. You can see where they've blocked off the old doorway there. It actually collapsed back in the 1950s. They had to re-level the monastery it was sinking there's it sits on top of a huge aquifer here and they didn't drive the pylons into bedrock so the entire monastery was leaning they had to come in I see a dime they had to come in and uh, re-level everything when they did that that the tunnel from here to Ulithorn collapsed that indeed was the only tunnel that ever existed and I can't even find where it starts over at Ulithorn. I've checked a thousand times and I can't even see where it enters over there. So I still wonder if it's not a myth. But I've been told that, that, that it did exist from 1926 to 1950. So that's the boiler room. Now... There's the auxiliary IR light. My camera's right up there. Definitely cold right here. And this is where the stairs are. So the stairs go upstairs, obviously. Uh, this is how you would get down to the basement from there. Now, this is where it kind of turns into an, a maze. I'm gonna go ahead and restart the video.